years ago they never fade away and i remember your face when you hit the ground i can recall the time and place on a midnight walk through the old streets trying to turn back the clock to the days of Hey y'all, welcome back or welcome if you're new. Today we are doing so much stuff in this video. So much that I didn't get it all done. So the next video we're going to be tackling laundry and taking down all the Valentine's Day decor. And we're going to be making nachos. So stay tuned for that. But today we are decorating um, making Marry Me Chicken. We're going to make the easiest cherry cheesecake you have ever seen. And cleaning, of course. So the first thing I'm going to do in this first two minutes is get this kitchen cleaned up. That way I can get into the Marry Me Chicken because it's going in the crock pot and it's going to need to cook for about four hours. Alright, for the Mary Me Chicken, we're going to need some basil, oregano, thyme. Also going to need some butter, onion powder, paprika, garlic. Sun-dried tomatoes. Pepper, salt. Um, I'm using flour, but it calls for cornstarch, um, chicken stock. I did not need the oil, by the way. Um, and I didn't mention the heavy, heavy cream. So the first thing we're putting in here is one and a half cups of chicken stock. Now, for some reason, I thought the recipe said stock, but it said broth. So chicken broth. I'm going to add that in there. Then I'm going to add my three tablespoons of, I'm just going to say cornstarch because that's what you're supposed to use. Um, it also said you could use almond flour, so that's why I ended up using the regular flour, even though the almond flour does have like a different texture to it. Um, it still tasted really good, so I don't think it mattered. The heavy cream is one cup. I hope y'all enjoy the like phone view on the side. I thought that was really cool to add in. Kind of gives you a 
different angles. So I'll do that every time we do a cooking video from now on. And then I'm going to add the three uh, teaspoons of garlic. Y'all, I added about two tablespoons. Who are we kidding? I love garlic. And then the sun-dried tomatoes, you can see I just poured it in there. Drain the juice <laughs> or the oil um, because it was super oily. So next time I make this, because it was very good, I will not... I, I would like just spoon out the tomatoes. <laughs> Don't do what I did. Okay, salt, pepper, says a half teaspoon of salt. Um, I did, I just kind of eyeballed the seasoning because I always feel like when they give you the measurements of the seasoning, it's just not enough. Like I'm not going to taste it. So I did do the half teaspoon or so of salt. It said one teaspoon of Italian seasoning. I didn't have that, but I used the fresh oregano, thyme, and basil. And now I'm adding in, this is where I just kind of do my own thing. It said half a teaspoon of onion powder. So I just, you can see how much I'm putting in. <laughs> a lot, a lot, a lot. And then um, also doing the paprika, just eyeballing that as well. It says half a teaspoon for that. I'll leave the recipe link down below by the way so you don't have to worry about following along. And then I'm going to add two tablespoons of butter. And then uh, that's it. So it's pretty simple. Now if you wanted to you can sear the chicken um, in the pan first for like a couple of minutes just to get that brown on each side and then put them in your crock pot but um, my tooth was still kind of sore on this day so I didn't want to eat anything like too firm so we just put the chicken straight in the crock pot it does call for four large boneless skinless chicken breast and let me see that feeds says four servings um, but I used chicken thighs because I just, I like the flavor of them. They have more fat. So I gravitate towards those more than chicken breast. And then I'm going to put, I had like three left over, so I'm just going to put them in a bag. But this is going to cook in the crock pot on high for four hours or on low for five to six hours. And while that's cooking, I'm going to go ahead and get some laundry going. I just pulled this load of laundry out of the dryer and I'm putting a um, new load in. I'm doing my rugs today. And y'all, it's so funny. Every time I show laundry, someone says that they don't know how we have so much laundry. And I think it just looks deceiving. Um, I probably only wash four loads a week, but I don't always get to them like right away so y'all pretty much always see me either folding laundry putting laundry away or washing a load of laundry but I definitely do not wash loads of laundry every single day I probably only wash laundry like two times a week unless like I just really have to wash something but most time it's just a couple of times a week and I'll do like one or two loads each each time. <laughs> So before I turned on the dryer, I just needed to run to the store to pick up some ground beef for our loaded nachos tomorrow. And then also a pack for spaghetti. And they were a little bit on sale this time, like $4.19 a pound. And last week, or last time we went, they were like $6. So we weren't doing that. I got some bowls some shredded cheese, some boiled eggs for our salad, whole milk for the dessert we're going to make today, some salad, and light sour cream for our nachos. So now we're getting into the dessert. This is so simple. I will say a like a homemade cheesecake is better, but this is so simple to do like just any time of the week. Um, it took like five minutes, literally. So we're going to put in the pack of 
jello cheesecake mix. And then you're gonna add two cups of whole milk to that. Whisk it or beat it for um, a couple of minutes. I think it said two. And then it takes five minutes to set. So I did kind of let it set up in the plastic bowl before I went to pour it in. But I did, you know, I poured it in when I when it was still pour a bowl. <laughs> Is that a word? Because I, I didn't want it to get like stuck to the bowl. So hopefully that helps. Maybe like a minute after I stirred, I just went ahead and poured it in. And then I waited another minute. So there was five minutes total before I started adding my cherries. Because we are going to make a heart shaped uh, topping. And then I'm using a graham cracker crust. So this was just three ingredients, whole milk, a pie crust, and the jello cheesecake box. Oh, and the cherry topping, so four. And now with like um, the cheesecake I'm referring to, Aaron's sister makes it and his mom makes it too. And it's really good. Um, but the like cheesecake portion of it, you have to buy cheese, um, cream cheese and all those things. And cream cheese, it's crazy. The Philadelphia one is like almost $6. A little cart, you know, a little box, which is just crazy to me. So I think this one came out to around $10 between the pie crust, the jar of cherries and milk. And then what else do we have? Oh, the little box of Jello. So it's not like the most affordable thing, but even like pies that you can get in the deli cost like seven dollars, and then a cheesecake costs like fifteen bucks. So it's definitely cheaper than making the one that I'm referring to and just buying one that's already made. So I laid out the shape of the heart first and then I just filled in the cherries around the outside of that. That way nothing kind of disrupted my little heart there in the middle. And then I just used the jelly part of the cherries to cover up any exposing cheesecake there and then I just put it in the refrigerator to cool but this is actually sets up within five minutes so if you really wanted to eat it right away you can or you could just stick it in the freezer for like 20 minutes for it to get cool if you're in a time crunch but this is like such an easy recipe to do during the week especially if you're super busy so hopefully that inspired y'all to go ahead and make one and of course you could use whatever fruit you want you don't have to use cherries so i'm going to put that in the refrigerator and then i'm going to get this living room cleaned up and vacuumed would lie to you doesn't matter what i do she's got a hold on me she knows how to drive a truck but she lets me pick her up when we're going dancing my heart stops beating when my headlights shining on her She's my country girl I couldn't tell you what she's doing with me She's so damn out of my league She's a little bit crazy on the weekends Dancing in her red dress And I love the way she looks in my eyes And a foot of light Aaron bought me these beautiful flowers for Valentine's Day. 
Um, side note, we put the lemon reef up because it's getting to be spring, y'all. It's 65 degrees today in North Carolina. Um, so I've got this big vase right here, which I put the one bouquet in. But since there's two bouquets, I ended up taking that little blue, um, or actually it's pretty big, blue vase that I got from Hobby Lobby and the little pink one that I got a few weeks ago and I took the artificial florals out of there and put the little pink roses in those so I can't wait for y'all to see how they turned out. I love feminine like soft feminine decor. I was calling it coastal glam and maybe it is but I feel like the real thing that I'm going towards is just like soft feminine light colors just like you want to give it a hug <laughs> anyways so these flowers are perfect for that didn't matter what I do she's got a hold on me Miss Margaret's also flowers were for her, so I cut the clip and she went back outside with her mama <laughs> until I got these flowers in the bedroom. Morning has broken, my windows are open. Wanna feel the wind blow through my hair. Which way do I follow? What happens tomorrow? I turn to you and hope you can guide the way. Sometimes I give up, just want to be on my own Even in the darkest times, you give me hope So I lean on you when I've lost my way I keep holding on for a better day I lean on you when the world's astray getting the bed made and then I'm going to decorate with those flowers and then move some things around in our bathroom um, because I have a faux flower vase on my nightstand so I'm going to put that in the bathroom and kind of rearrange some things in there.
So I ended up changing this around. I'll show y'all how I switch it around in the next video, but I will just kind of explain it. So I had put the big flower vase right beside the lantern, but I didn't quite like how it looked there. So I ended up taking the little perfume tray and putting it where those flowers are, just kind of swapping it. That way I had two tall things on each side and everything balanced out more. tried yeah to become better but i thought again if i said it it'll last forever i also switch up this section so i'll show y'all that in the next video too i've given you all a lot of reasons to watch the next video aren't i <laughs> But um, I think y'all will like how it actually turns out. And then here, I just kind of layer the two bases together and just make that very simple. I love the pink roses. And by the time all this was done, it was time to eat dinner. So I'm going to show y'all what... Oh, I did add some Parmesan to the top it does say to do like fresh parmesan but i'm just going to use the kind that you put on pizza and here was dinner we had garlic bread and salad with it i forgot to film the salad bit um uh, but I am so glad you clicked on today's video. I will see you back here in the next one very soon. Bye.